lately I've had a goal to try and carve out some time each week in order to develop some film, even if it's just a couple of roles that I've shot recently. Um, over the last year, I would say this is the least amount of film I've shot in any given year in at least the last decade. My goal is to knock out this backlog so that at least I'm caught up and once a week I can carve out some time to develop some film that I've shot that given week. That way I'm not just drowning in undeveloped film. And right now I've got basically this little container. This is all that's left of the backlog. It's a big mix of things. I've got some Tri-X in here. Pushed a 3200. I don't remember the last time I shot 3200 Tri X. I just developed some Tri X that we'll take a look at from 2013. So that's probably also from around there. Uh, Contacts 1600. Uh, pushed to 1600. This is HP5. It's photos of Nora. If you remember the old video I did on the Contact 645, that would have been around that time frame. Still haven't seen the pictures on this roll. Some of the old Ektachrome E100S. This was shot um, October 3rd, 2013. So it's a big mix of different film uh, pushed to different speeds. Over the years, there's been a lot of film that's been pushed to different speeds or film that I don't normally shoot a lot of. So I don't really find myself developing if I only have one roll. I like to you know, stack up at least five or six rolls develop it all at once and as a result of that a lot of film just kind of slips through the cracks so that's primarily been this backlog of film that I've been trying to work through lately so I thought it would be fun to uh, kind of go through these scans for the first time together um, I've seen the negatives after developing but I just got everything scanned in and uh, it's been a while since I did one of these life on film episodes so we're gonna do that today it'll probably just devolve into me uh, going on different tangents and telling stories Stories, but that's what we're going to do today. So let's get into it. That is a very young taker right there. Uh, he does not look like this at all. He is much more gray these days. Um, actually, where he's sitting in this photo, this was probably shot around 2013, I think. Um, where he is sitting right there is the spot next to the window. If you remember the very start of this channel, the GoPro and just sitting there in the corner, only 90s kids will remember. Um, this is that spot right there. So this one goes way back. I would imagine probably with an RB67. If it was 2013, that sounds about right. Oh, and you can actually even see there is the Kodak writing right here. This is from the paper backing on that roll of Tri-X. I'm guessing just because it's sat undeveloped for so long that um, you can actually see the paper backing there. So you can see the number two right there at the top and uh, these little areas where it says Kodak. Well, there's, I guess, one reason to uh, encourage people to develop your film sooner rather than later. Oh, some severely underexposed skateboarding photos here at the park. Uh, this is my friend Jordan doing a crooked grind across the top stair there. Uh, that is severely underexposed. If I can try to bring that up as much as I can, uh, it's going to be super, super grainy there in the shadows. Definitely could have used a flash in this one. You cannot see anything in his shirt, his face. Um, that is just all completely gone. I mean, that was without a doubt, you know, my mistake on underexposing this film. But yeah, Tri-X, man, those shadows, once they're gone, they are gone. Oh, we got a classic uh, mirror selfie with the Hasselblad 500CM. Um, this, I'm thinking, is probably early 2014. Um, I usually go by what camera I was using at the time. That can help me remember what year it was. Most, like, I guess, life events or things, I link to pictures that I've shot around that time frame. And then I think, okay, what year, when was I using that particular camera? Because I've used so many over the years. And uh, I'm going to guess this is probably 2014. <laughs> this photo of Rusi when she was, again, much younger. She's, she's an old lady now. With the quilt over her head, the first thing that comes to mind, if you have any guesses, if you see it, Game of Thrones, what's her name? Uh, you know, tell, tell Cersei it was me. I want her to know it was me, whatever she said. That's her, same person. 
Here's one from just last summer. We found this uh, giant black wasp in the backyard. I think it was already dead when we found it. Um, not that it, I have remorse for wasps. If it was alive, I absolutely killed it because uh, it's a wasp. But it was huge. And so we brought it inside and uh, I was taking photos of it. I think we just put the glass over it, though, like just to keep strawberry from messing with it. You can see I threw this little aperture MC uh, LED light just on top of it so we could get a better look at it. But kind of like that one, though. Some more photos, yeah, from around that time, early 2022. This was like right after we moved into the house. Elliot and Taker in his room. I remember these. I remember taking the lens hood off of my lens and just seeing how much flare I would get with the sun coming directly in. Uh, I do remember that now, and absolutely, uh, it worked. There is some wild flare in some of these. Elliot and Uncle Jay playing some tic-tac-toe, as always. There's a million reasons it's awesome to be living with my brother again, but yeah, without a doubt, him and the kids being able to play and see each other every day, that's the best. And there's another photo of Jay only. Uh, this was way long ago. Um, I think this was around 2015 when I developed this role and I was hanging it up to dry. I started looking at what was on the film uh, just to get a rough idea. And I saw photos that were shot here at this house, but in 2015. And uh, Jay and his dog, Ellie, who has passed since, unfortunately, photos of my mom and dad holding Nora when she was a baby and sitting at the table with her. Surreal seeing these for the first time um, all these years later. Yeah, that's rough. Um, that's rough for sure. Uh, I'm thankful I have these photos and it's awesome to see them for the first time, but that is rough. God, Nora was so little. That would have been her first Christmas and I am not emotionally prepared for this role. Uh, let's look at some other ones here. Here's some, this looks like, yeah, right around like late 2021, right before we moved into this house. It really hasn't been that long, but it feels like it's been forever since we lived at that house. Looks like hanging out in the backyard at night, probably had a fire going and, uh, just chasing the kids around with the M6 and the SF20. I haven't used that flash on my M6 a whole lot over the years, but uh, seeing these, it does make me want to use it more often. Elliot and all of his Mario plushes. Uh, if you saw the Brooklyn video, there you go. He's, he's added a lot more to his collection since then. A lot of memories in that house. The house me and my brother grew up in and where Elliot and Nora spent the first few years. Elliot's about to turn seven. Actually, I think this is going up on Halloween. So the tomorrow, if you're watching this when it goes up tomorrow, November 1st, he'll be seven years old. Nora is eight, going on nine. Forrest is about a year and a half almost. If you've been here watching these videos since the beginning and you remember like seeing these kids as babies, you're getting old too, just like me. This is the role I was most excited to see, though. Uh, this is Elliot's roll of film that he shot just a couple of months ago. I went out to shoot a video for Molly's Run Club. Um, I've mentioned it before. Her and one of our best friends, Keenan, uh, they started this run club about a year ago, and it was just a few friends. And now it's grown into this huge thing for Chillicothe. And uh, there are, you know, four days out of the week that they have scheduled runs. She maps out the routes each week. Uh, they do trail runs. They do stuff for beginners. It's amazing what they've done. Uh, just super proud of them. But I went and I made a video of the run club one night. And as I was kind of walking around town to different spots along their route to shoot video, Elliot went with me with this little point and shoot camera that I got him. Um, it was like a $20 camera. I got it off of Amazon. Um, it's basically the same point and shoot camera that has been rebranded a million times over the years. But I threw some HP5 in it and just told him, you know, you're shooting photos tonight. I've got to shoot video. And he honestly... A couple of these he absolutely crushed. They start their runs at 50 West. You've got the sign right here as they were all taking off. Kanan and Isaac up front, like mid stride. They're nice and sharp, but you get a little bit of soft kind of movement, and that lens, the vignette in the corners, and the really soft corners. This is a lot of fun, and that's a rad photo. He framed that up really well. 
this one right here. This is uh, Keenan's wife, Julie. She was pushing Forrest that night in the stroller because Molly had Nora running with her. And uh, you can see Gene was, well, you know, I don't know if he was excited. He was just along for the ride. Got a finger creeping in up here at the top of the frame, though. I told him he had to watch that. I used to do it all the time with this camera when it was like a Vivitar or something. It's real easy to forget where your hand is on the front there. Oh, he's got like a solid panning shot here. She's nice and sharp as she was running past, but everything else is you get that side to side motion blur. All right, kid cropped it at the knee, but kids onto something. Happy to be working on this backlog, trying to get caught up here. And uh, it was fun to kind of, you know, see these for the first time, share them with you all. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, let me know because I've done these in the past before. And like most videos, I always think who would want to watch this, but uh, the feedback on these has always been overwhelmingly positive. So I appreciate all of you watching these videos. Uh, if you enjoyed this one, let me know. And um, I guess I will continue working through this and maybe we'll do more stuff like this. So let me know if you're interested in the comments. And last but not least, a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. When I first created mattdayphoto.com 10 years ago, I did it with Squarespace. This was long before they ever decided to sponsor my channel, but I chose Squarespace because it was just a no-brainer. They had everything I needed in one place, and all these years later, they're still continuing to build and add new features to their service, all while keeping it extremely easy to use while you do it yourself. Drag and drop customization, tons of different templates to choose from, along with 24-7 award-winning customer service that are always there when you need them. You can share your work there, have a place where people can contact you or even schedule appointments. You can even set up your own online store. Since I launched mattdayphoto.com, I've sold my own zines, photo books, prints, and merch all through my own website, no need to use a third-party service, and they also have tons of different plugins from third parties to keep everything in one place. Keeping track of your inventory, shipping fulfillment, it's all a breeze with their built-in tools. It's never been easier to build your own website, and you can start a free trial by going to squarespace.com slash mattday. Use the promo code MATTDAY at checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it for this one, though. Again, if you guys want to see more of these videos, let me know. I'd be happy to do it, but you've got to tell me that you want to see it because otherwise I might talk myself out of it. That happens from time to time. But that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. I love you, and I'll see you next time.